Namaste, this is Dr. Aisha Butalia. I welcome you all for today's presentation on how to write the introduction of a research paper or a project report or maybe any evaluation report you are planning to write. Now you may be wondering about why this topic, how to write IEEE paper is defined here. Because to know about that introduction is the part of actually a research paper or maybe of also a project report, but uh, as continuation with our previous presentation on how to write an abstract. Okay, so this is the continuation that first we had a lecture on abstract and today we will be going into much detail about how to write the introduction. So basically IEEE is a very uh, famous format. Okay, these are the guidelines which give you uh, some recommendations how to write a research paper. Basically, a short paper may be of six pages, a long paper may be of say 12 to 13 pages, even at times 21 pages. Okay, so this 21 pages long paper or maybe a six pages short paper has to be converted into a project report, maybe of 100 pages or 50 pages. In a thesis or a PhD thesis, maybe a couple of papers you may, may have written say suppose seven papers, right? So seven papers should be combined to have a PhD thesis of say 200 to 250 pages. So basically this is being elaborated more in terms of project report, but here we would be giving guidelines for the research paper, which is a short, a short section. So comparing to a six pages short paper, these guidelines are given. You can accordingly convert it into your undergraduate 50 pages report or a hundred pages postgraduate report or maybe 200 to 250 pages PhD report and likewise. So just to uh, give the highlights of the previous presentation that why we write a research paper. Of course, we have got a different lecture on how to select the topic, what motivates you. But to give in brief, writing research paper is primary mechanism for passing knowledge along to those working in your field or related fields. If you're just starting your own education, you will be asked to hone the skill of writing research papers to demonstrate that you cannot only understand, but can relate what you have learned in the class. Okay, so similarly, if you're writing a PhD thesis and you have got some good written papers, it justifies okay, your research work. So as your skills improve, you will, be, you will be writing papers, documenting each stage of your own research. Okay, so initially when you are on six months of your research, maybe PhD, then you may write a literature survey paper or a survey paper. Okay, then gradually you will go to the first module, first objective, then write a third paper on the second module or the third, second objective, something like that. Okay, so as your skills improve in your research progress, you will be writing papers, documenting each stage of your research and the best way okay to identify that your work is substantial is in the form of research paper so this will provide you uh, some valuable feedback from your peers and as your research papers are published you will discover other researchers who are working in the same field and in some cases they will become collaborators and respected colleagues so throughout your career your research publications become an important part of your resume showing not only what you have accomplished, but how good you are at communicating your work to others. So ultimately your research paper survive you and become part of your ever expanding body of knowledge. To conclude, research papers are very important to you and to your field. Develop the skill to write research papers early and that skill will serve you throughout your life. So even the undergraduates, school students are also going through research papers. So let's start with the introduction. So last time in our abstract, we had told about that each line, it should be 200 to 250 words, the entire abstract, as abstract. 
and each line we had defined in detail what should be okay it's just a guidelines or a recommendation it's not very strict to follow this but when you follow these guidelines you come out with a very good abstract now as you can see first one or two lines should be general intro about the title right but in introduction that one or two lines has to be expanded to five lines okay so you can say that some initial parts of the abstract which was in say brief you need to expand it in the introduction section now through introduction to any writing is frequently associated with beginning so this is not about the introduction of the uh, introduction of the research paper but if you can find a guide how to write an introduction to the research paper it presents the topic to the reader rather your title your topic your problem statement your aim of why you have done all these experimentations and what are the objectives which you fulfilled so while creating an introduction for a research students frequently they get lost in the inconsistency of uh, their thoughts so you know this is these are the very easy guidelines which would stick you to your problem statement and it will help the reader to connect rather okay because as soon as the person tries to read your paper the first part is the introduction so the connectivity of your problem statement okay with the entire theory and the scope behind should be very very clear and that gap is being filled by the introduction so as per the ieee format okay it should be of 12 point and regular font using times new roman so an introduction as said it is an initial part of the research paper and the part that the reader is likely to read first okay at least when focusing deeply and reading your paper in detail so hence definitions notions and some other important information required for understanding the paper is presented or listed in this section of introduction every research paper needs context so that readers can understand why you have created it this is exactly what you can do in your research paper introduction of course this can mean that your introduction is the hardest part of your paper to write first so it is essential that you take your time and make sure that you get it right the introduction of writing is going to set out your rationale okay the scope so which is what a research will based around your readers will be able to tell right from the beginning what they are going to be reading about and even whether it interests them it is important that you make the beginning of your research paper interesting and engage with your readers from the first line itself this is this will make sure that people continue to read research and learn about what you have found out in addition you should also state hypothesis and the way you think your work will turn out in conclusion so it is the crucial part that you always include an introduction in your paper or in your project report on your thesis whatever so what it should include it should include it should introduce your topic okay it should create some context and background tell your reader about the research you plan to carry out state your rationale expand why your research is important and state your hypothesis now this seems quite theoretical so we'll go one by one so you first start with your announcing your topic okay so we'll go parts by parts of the introduction so first initially you announce your topic right so topic is basically the fundament of any uh, writing you you prepare regarding what which angle you look at your topic it will reflect different aspects and it should always important to capitalize letters properly to make it look even better it's better to begin with outlining your topic there is no secret on how to start a research paper introduction you should first state your topic and add some connected with topic issues that bothers you a lot this is perfect strategy to intrigue the reader okay so you should have the first lines now see this was quite theoretical but just to have a brief you can see over here a very easy guidelines that general discussion about the topic approx five lines is expected in a short paper of six pages right we are discussing as earlier this is a short paper six pages and the introduction 
is expected about the discussion of the title five lines you've already done this in abstract okay you just need to expand it more then review the literature so problem and scope in details okay so before that you can even add literature uh, survey related to the paper but why we have put this as a third point because any reader has to first get fascinated that where that problem statement or the idea which you are proposing is going to get used okay so you should define your problem create clearly with your aim and your objectives and the scope in details scope means the application where you are going to so you should stress on the rationale where the key element of your beginning once you stated the topic it's time to prove that it's relevant and give readers food for thought okay so this problem and its scope in details which will give its relevance to the readers and it will also give the readers food for thought okay so the rationale serves as an indicator for both the importance of your essay and attitude to the issue so the rationale should be iconic and precise to show the reader the significance of your research right so now you can add literature survey as the next point where reviewing the lit uh, literature would actually be developing a statement in the main body you will be need some literature sources to refer to okay so we if you can have this literature survey as second part also of your paper but see this introduction can have three paragraphs the first paragraph can have these two points okay second paragraph should be totally on the literature survey okay so you can uh, make it from five lines to say uh, a paragraph of seven to ten lines also okay and in case your literature survey is in brief then you can have a separate section to be added so if you maintain it and citations extracts from the works of the famous scientists scientists authors or philosophers you will prove your point okay so that's why you got you need to put the references also especially in the literature survey section there should be more of references what are references how to make it that will we will go much more detail in the references presentation don't neglect modern time scholars that are being deeply concerned about the issue or opinion you stated and don't neglect about your online plagiarism checker to make sure that your paper is original so introduce should briefly state what the literature is all about so this clearly states that this whether it's a separate section altogether okay say point number 2 as literature survey or whether it is a part of introduction it is very very important if suppose you have identified a problem statement and you did not do literature survey now what is literature survey we can have a separate presentation on that but to have a brief it tells you about what existing work has been done on your problem statement or as said in the abstract there are two kinds of uh, activities research and innovation so if it's a research we need to identify the existing uh, solutions for your problem statement then only you will come to know whether your present uh, proposed solution is already been done or not okay so you should know what's the history behind that what people have worked uh, on that particular problem statement and if you are going for innovation and you are using some existing algorithm then what that existing algorithm gave you the results okay how much accurate it was with the tools it was it was being implemented okay so in either case your literature survey should include your uh, what you can say up to date scientists so you should have say you can have some old papers if suppose this is a 2020 research paper obviously you should have more of of references of the last two years and of course very very importantly the six months prior research but some papers may lead you to some basic research papers that can obviously be some old ones but it should not happen happen that you do not focus the up to date type of papers so this is what about you have to go in this literature survey okay so and the third paragraph can be this section describes the already work done sorry the third part is outline about the paper okay so in outline basically uh, 
when all the important work is done okay uh, about uh, your project so it's time for the outline of the research paper so generally this part you can write it even after the entire paper is being framed because when all the important work is done then will be the time for the project out, uh, report or outline and for a research paper then it's the time for the outline of the research paper structure so outline is nothing but the structure of your paper so that the reader comes to know you know how the paper is going to go about what issues what modules it has to discuss so not every mentor requires an essay structure over you in the introduction but sometimes students are asked to stress on few aspects of their future research in the outline also okay so it depends upon your guide or maybe your point of view on this so this is not about the detailed depiction of every part of your work the outline is just a short paragraph okay which consists of 3 to 4 sentences and represents your plan of the entire paper you can also look for some essay introduction example to grab the ideas okay how people have gone through even you can go to my research papers just type uh, research paper or i triple e paper aisha butalia you will get some papers and you can see how we have written the introduction so just to summarize till this that you can have 3 to 4 paragraphs where first paragraph can be the general introduction of the title you can have second paragraph as literature survey if you find that literature survey you have to define in much deep especially in a survey paper okay you can have you cannot just conclude it in the introduction part then you can have a separate module itself separate section third unit can be third paragraph can be outline of the paper and just note that uh, an outline uh, of the paper uh, see a paragraph should at least contain say 7 to 8 lines you know you cannot say that two lines can uh, be included as a single paragraph so if we are saying that it should be a paragraph then maximum uh, say minimum to maximum say 5 to 10 lines minimum 5 and 10 lines can compromise a paragraph and if you think that no you have only two to three lines then probably you can club the paragraphs you know it is that way you have to think about so last but not the least this is section describe the already work done okay so in the outline you need keep the note that you have to uh, highlight about the already work done existing system and the existing technologies methods prototypes okay even the existing idea how it is solved existing algorithms how they are used what are the loopholes so this section basically if you summarize okay it describes the already work done plus the outline of what you are going to go through the paper okay so just uh, before ending this how to write an introduction just small prescriptions for the students who want to know all about the introduction define and explain the concepts so is writing including concepts that are going to be complicated for the average reader to understand if the answer to this question is yes this means that you should take the time to explain them as best you can in your introduction okay why because this includes any jargon or terms that you think will be important to know before reading your findings and analysis so for example uh, one of my research paper was on uh, rough set theory and we had explained the model using lower approximation and upper approximation now before highlighting or defining uh the algorithms using lower approximation and upper approximation if i don't highlight what is rough sets what are the use of rough rough sets as a machine learning algorithms it is used for uncertainty and precision in data okay so these things you know you need to uh clarify in the introduction itself otherwise you know it becomes very very complicated for an average reader to understand okay your later part of the introduction and as said in every of my presentation regarding research paper or project report that the interest in your paper should be till the end then only your paper would be included as a citation and then only is the meaning of actually writing a paper if being it is being used in somebody's work in any form okay so that is why to maintain the interest your language your clarity in the technical writing should be very very as per the reader's choice as per the readers and a normal readers 
understandability. Okay, you can even fascinate your introduction. That is the second prescription that you start with a quotation. So you want to capture a reader's attention right for the beginning. This is very, very important tip um, I can give you. If you are not sure how to do that effectively, think about including a quotation that captures the heart of the topic. This will particularly true if your essay is for social subjects such as English, history and humanity. This is going to help create a picture in the reader's head and they will remember this when they are reading your work. Okay, so depending on the subject of your paper, this could also include a striking statistics. I'll give you an example of my research when I was giving my thesis presentation. Okay, I had started with in the introduction uh, on a shloka, Sri Ramachandra Kripalu Bhajanana Harar Bhava Bhai Bhanuna. And then I explained this in the meaning in English. And then I actually explaining it, I made them sure that my title of the uh, research was to identify unstable sentiments in anybody's emotion, okay, through your images. So when somebody was performing this, and in fact, I performed it uh, while my presentation. So I showed through my presentation that even by facial gestures, this has a context behind, okay, where one gesture can have multiple meanings and a single emotion using different hand gestures can have multiple meanings again. Even in the words itself, when it was written in the paper, a word also, depending upon its context in the sentence, the meaning changes, right? So similarly, this was the Sanskrit uh, shloka, which was started and it suddenly, you know, it, uh, everybody was curious and a computer engineering PhD student giving a presentation with a shloka and with a dance form. It was just a one minute dance form where uh, Sri Ramachandra, the shloka was depicted through hand gestures. So to make sure that, you know, the public has some curiosity, whether it's a writing part or whether it's a demonstrating part. The third prescription I would give you is communicate your structure. So readers need to know not only why you are in conducting a particular research topic, but also how you intend to do this. Okay, so that is also very, very important. Because at times when you understand that, you know, people are talking very vague in the introduction, again, the interest goes away. So this means that your introduction should set out the structure that will be followed in your article. This will allow a reader to easily navigate between different parts and make sure that it all makes sense. All papers should be organized to ensure that the reader understands everything that is going on and to make your findings valuable. Next prescription is writing a good intro requires matching well the information in it with the rest of the paper. It must serve the needs of the rest of the paper. It should introduce the reader smoothly into the topic and facilitate an easy read without, without requiring the excessive aid of external resources. Okay, so he should not go back, he or she should not go back to the Google and found, find out some terms which he's not able to connect. Okay, so this will, what will happen? Once he goes to the Google, he may connect to something else and not probably come back to your paper. So as said again, okay, it should have the connectivity very, very fast and that connectivity should not be lost in the introduction. So don't think it, think it to be a very unimportant part of the paper, right? So this is all about introduction. Of course, there can be N number of things you can do it innovatively. Even there can be N number of things we can have presentation, but to, be, to make it precise, okay? These are the things which are given over here. First para general in discussion, Second para about problem and its scope and details. You can even combine depending upon the paragraphs lines. You can have a separate para on literature survey or you can avoid it. And then you can have three paragraphs only. So if you avoid the literature survey section, you can have one paragraph on general discussion. Second paragraph on problem statements and its scope and details. Third paragraph on outline about the paper. Another uh, choice can be that you can have one paragraph on general discussion, second paragraph on problem and its scope, third paragraph on literature survey, fourth paragraph on outline. Another choice can be, you can have general discussion about the title as first paragraph, and the first paragraph itself can be combined with problem and its scope, 
okay you can have second unit as literature survey and you can have third paragraph as outline so you know it depends upon how lengthy your paper whether it's a short paper it's a long paper okay depending upon that you can uh, include the paragraphs you can have paragraphs ranging from 5 to 7 lines to up to even 15 lines but make sure that you have some references more references rather especially if you have a literature survey section in your introduction i hope uh, this presentation is useful will be useful for you for writing your research paper or your project report okay and it will solve your doubts while even writing your thesis okay if you have any doubts you can uh, mail me uh, on mention in the description box okay feel free so that i i can help you out solve your doubts thank you once again this is dr aisha butalia giving the presentation of introduction importance of introduction and how to write it in your research paper project report or thesis